What's up guys, this is gonna be a different video here. I'm gonna be talking about six different things. I don't know why I did this. Normally I usually only talk about one, maybe even two things, but here I got six different things because a lot has actually happened since the last time I published a video. So, number one, Neuralink, and I'm gonna be talking about what the importance of Neuralink is gonna be. Two, Giga Berlin and what updates it has gotten. Three, I'm gonna be talking about the new autopilot software. Four, I'm gonna be talking about the split, the uh, stock split that actually occurred and how it impacted the stock. Five, how Tesla is gonna be handling the S&P 500 inclusion. And number six, something very neat, a new factory at a new location that might actually be coming. And obviously all the timestamps will be in the description below if you wanna skip over some parts. But yeah, that's what we're going to be discussing today. So leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll get right into it. Starting off, I'm talking about Neuralink. Neuralink is going to be essentially, well, it is already a chip in your brain that can do various things and it can actually control your neurons and what you're thinking and what you can actually do. And the event that actually happened wasn't as impressive in what it did right now even though if you understood it it is actually very impressive but what it can do in the future for example you're using your computer laptop ipad your phone but you can now control it with your thoughts so your phone could just be in your pocket you want to google something really quickly do uh, calculations like calculate how many expenses you've actually occurred during the month and you want to add them all together you have to take out a calculator or something or some people are just really good at math they can do it in their head but for example you just want to do all those calculations instead of you actually pulling out your phone going on the calculator app and actually typing everything out what you can do is essentially control your phone via your mind or via your thoughts and that is going to be very very impressive now a few things that will actually happen and elon has actually said is going to be you can summon a tesla which means you can basically drive a car by your thoughts and right now at least what's going to be happening in the near future for Neuralink is going to be treating patients who are quadriplegic which means their arms and hands don't really work and how they're going to get around that is basically put a chip in your brain and put a chip say in your lower back and essentially wirelessly communicate the signal so usually when you have a spinal cord injury what happens is your neurons cannot get the signal through to, to wherever it needs to go. And basically with these Neuralink chips, what you can do is actually place them at different locations of your body. And basically you have nothing to lose. You only have things to gain. And that is gonna really help a lot of people out who are suffer injuries like blindness, hearing loss, who cannot walk or whatever, or moving their hands or just any sort of problem like that. And that's what's gonna happen in the near future. And then obviously, in the far future, I can't even imagine what's going to be possible because like many people didn't imagine that the phone would become what it is today, even just 10 years ago. So just 10 years later, you can't even imagine what Neuralink can be used for. Now, obviously, it poses a security risk. It poses whatever risk. But again, if you're using a phone that did pose a security risk and really in 2020, you can argue, do you really have privacy? I'll leave you at that. So now number two, we're going to be talking about Giga Berlin. And basically right now, at least in recent times, it has gotten a roof over its head. The amount or the speed at which Giga Berlin is actually being built is insane. It's actually being built quicker than Giga Shanghai. And China speed is really quick, really quick at building stuff and everything. But Tesla is able to increase that speed at building their Giga or at least the phase one of Giga Berlin. That is going to be amazing because by... Q1, hopefully Q1, but definitely by Q2 of next year, they'll be producing the Model Y and possibly the Model 3. So Giga Berlin will actually be pumping out cars by the middle of next year, which is really good because Europe really needs to get these cheaper cars and just cars over there really quickly. Right now, Tesla does like these batch deliveries. So in say one month, all cars produced in that month would just go to Europe and all of those thousands of thousands of cars would just go to Europe and deliver them in Europe. And that is why sometimes in Europe, some people order and then within a week or so, they actually get the car delivered. It's because that car was already on the ship because they send a lot more cars on the ship than how many orders they have. And by that time, the orders filter out and then you probably have to wait a month or two before you get your car and when they actually start producing it for Europe. Because mind you, they're only building all their cars for North America and Europe in the Fremont factory in California. So the charge board is different. There are EU regulations that make stuff to be different. The headlights are different, something like that. So 
really it is a big logistics problem and that is why Tesla is trying to find the most efficient way but the, obviously the best way to do this is just building a factory in Europe and that's going to be that's literally going to solve most of your problems and yeah that is what they're doing and they're building it at an incredible pace it has a roof over its head it has the walls you can pretty much it's basically a building now it's a flat out building it's, it's insane the speed at which giga berlin is actually going up it'll be even more impressive to see how quickly giga texas will actually go up that is going to be impressive to see so thirdly we got new autopilot software now this autopilot software can read and react to speed signs now before the Tesla autopilot system could obviously read and detect, okay, this is a speed sign and possibly even read, okay, it's 35 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, really anything, right? But now the autopilot system has can actually read and react to the speed sign. So when you're driving on autopilot, normally what happens is autopilot takes the data of the, the speed data on the road from GPS. And sometimes that speed data is not updated or there is construction. And normally in construction, you have these temporary speed signs. So now what autopilot would do is read those speed signs and react. So say there's construction going on the freeway, for example, speed limit 65, 70 miles an hour, but because of construction, they limited it to 55, 50 miles an hour or something like that. What's gonna happen is that the autopilot would read, okay, the speed is actually decreased here and now the speed is actually 50 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour, or whatever the case may be. And so it will automatically slow itself down. And obviously you can set your offset on autopilot and slow itself down and get you through. Otherwise, before you had to manually slow yourself down, but here it can do it by itself. So that is a really impressive feature. And obviously this solves pretty much the entire highway issue. And now all that's really le left in my opinion is just turning on city streets and changing lanes on city streets. And obviously you get the parking lot, but I don't think that's as big of an issue as it may seem because they already have smart summon and that is a iffy job but I, i'm pretty sure they can like refine it and make it better but basically the proof of concept is smart summon it already works it can do it today the cameras can read the actual parking lot the lanes in the parking lot and park itself so really i think autopilot is advancing really quickly especially since the rewrite is coming and the rewrite is supposed to do, introduce a lot more neat and better features and just make it more reliable yeah i, th I think we're here the full self-driving i think it's here now number four we have the tesla stock split occurred and it actually went into effect yesterday yesterday the stock was actually trading on the stock split basis which means that the stock actually started the day off at around 450 bucks or something like that and it ended the day and it ended the day off at around 500 dollars at an all-time high of 500 dollars pre-split this would be 25 hundred dollars a share that is a big jump and i'm guessing a lot of people were actually waiting for the stock split to actually happen and one of the main reasons is for this is so that a lot of people can actually go in and actually buy the stock and maybe some institutional investors also bought the stock because the volumes yesterday were crazy it's now of course the stock split happened there's like in more news to it there's probably something that's happening a lot of Retail investors probably got into the stock and overall it's been a great day. Today the stock is actually down slightly. It's down about one to two percent, but that's not really a big worry because this stock is outperforming everything. And obviously you can actually debate whether it's a bubble or not, or whether the stock will come crashing down, or you, if you want to wait for a dip. People have been waiting for a dip since like April. I don't know. It's your personal opinion, it's your money whatever you can do whatever you want all right now the next news is carrying forward from the actual stock it's that tesla will raise five billion dollars for the s p 500 inclusion so when the s p 500 announces that the inclusion will happen and that they will take tesla in they have to buy something like a hundred twenty million stocks or something like that something crazy and what tesla's going to do is they're going to dilute dilute the stock by raising five billion dollars in capital what that means for you investors is that five billion dollars worth of extra shares will be issued to retail or institutional investors as common stock and the dilution of this is only one percent just to give you perspective yesterday the stock went up 12 percent so really you're looking at a net gain of 11 percent I, I i'm not going to complain and it's obviously better because Tesla has actually said it takes about $1 billion to make one gigafactory and with a $5 billion capital raise, they can pay off some of their debts, they can 
produce more factories, announce more gigafactories. And this comes down to my next point here, the last point, the sixth point we have here. Tesla might be opening a factory in India. We don't know how true this is. We don't really know if it's actually going to happen. But there is a high possibility that Tesla will open a factory in India. Tesla is not in India. They will want to get to India. And I'm, I'm highly confident that Tesla will eventually come to India. I just don't know when. And based on the news, it could actually be that Tesla might be entering India. Probably by the end of this year, they might announce a factory being opened in, or being built in India. And it's also likely, by the way, not only in India, it's also likely that another factory might be made in, say, the UK or, or other parts of the world. We don't really know exactly yet. Nothing official has actually come from Tesla or, or Elon Musk. This has all just been more speculation. And that is why I put it last, because it's pure speculation. There's really no ground proof we can actually go based off of this. So Tesla factory in India, there's a possibility. Obviously they want to get it to India. It's not like they just don't want to come or build a factory in India or they just don't want to capture the market share or anything. Tesla doesn't want to get come into India and actually sell their products there, especially their energy business, which will be huge in India because India is one of the largest users of coal and Tesla energy really would benefit from that. Now, obviously there are a lot of solar suppliers already in India, probably producing solar panels at a very competitive rate, but no one really has a big market share in batteries. And we'll probably know more about this on battery day on September the 22nd, coming up really soon, really shortly. If Tesla is actually planning on building their own batteries, which is very highly likely that they're gonna do that. And if their batteries are much cheaper than the competition, they can easily produce them in India for less cost because labor is cheaper there. So just like in China. And what that's gonna do is lower the cost of the batteries itself even further. And obviously that's just gonna accelerate the transition of sustainable energy across the world, which is Tesla's mission statement. And based on that, I will end right here. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how you actually think of this actual segment here when I combined a few news, because I didn't really think all of these news pieces, except for maybe Neuralink, were actually big enough to make a, an entirely new separate video. So I just combined all of them into one and I haven't published a video for like a few days, half a week or something. So that's why I wanted to get one out as well. So yeah, what do you guys think of this? Do you like this? Should I make more? I don't know. So let me know in the comments down below and I'll talk to you there. All right, peace.